Hi, hello everyone. Uh, my name's Skylar Earl, and as, uh, as John said, I work for a company called uh, Simple Geo, where we build uh, location tools for developers. Um, and I'm here to tell you about um, how crowdsourcing changed disaster relief forever. And uh, the, um, by crowdsourcing, I mean basically any, uh, any collaborative process to create knowledge that is free and open, and this usually happens on the internet. Um, one good example of crowdsourcing is a project called OpenStreetMap. And OpenStreetMap, you can sort of think of it <clears throat> as, a, as sort of a Wikipedia of maps. Uh, the objective of the OpenStreetMap project is to collaboratively map the entire world on a free and open basis. Now, the way that this works is OpenStreetMap contributors will go out in the world and they'll collect information using GPS receivers and notebooks, then they'll bring it back home, they'll compile it, they'll edit it, they'll upload it to the OpenStreetMap database, and in this way, OSM proposes to map the entire world. <clears throat> so. Uh, you may ask, why would we do this? Well, it turns out that in a lot of places in the world, geographic information is not readily available. Where it is available, it's often inaccurate, inconsistent, or just plain wrong. I like to think of this sign on the, on the uh, left-hand side here as saying, no satellites this way, only trucks. Uh, anyway, uh, Jesse Robbins tells this story how after Hurricane Katrina, the Red Cross attempted to send evacuees over a bridge that no longer existed, and when he called them on this, they said, what do you mean the bridge is no longer there? I can see it on Google Maps. So you can see the importance of having accurate geographic information in a humanitarian crisis. Like, for example, uh, the earthquake in Haiti this January, which um, tragically killed uh, over 100,000 people and destroyed over half of the buildings in the capital city of Port-au-Prince, including this one. Um, I actually took this photo myself. This is the former headquarters of the National Mapping Agency, CNIGS. And so you can see CNIGS was not really in a position to support the relief process with their geographic information. Uh, the one really good source of geographic information that was available was provided by the satellite imagery providers. And they really stepped up and they put tons of imagery, current imagery, out on the internet uh, where you can see, for example, IDP camps uh, set up across the street from the ruined presidential palace. Uh, so the OpenStreetMap uh, volunteers got together and compiled this imagery and used it to turn Haiti from virtually terra incognita in the OpenStreetMap database into one of the best mapped places on Earth in the process of a couple of weeks, uh, which is really quite amazing. And you can see several hundred OpenStreetMap developers contributed to produce, for example, this is a tiny portion of Port-au-Prince, and you can see the incredible level of detail here from streets all the way down to buildings and even temporary internally displaced people camps. Um, and then this data found its way into a lot of different places. For example, the Mission 4636 project used OpenStreetMap data to, col to collaboratively, to crowdsource the geocoding of uh, SMS messages that were sent by victims during the crisis, um, and they were able to get help to them this way. Uh, search and rescue workers, this extremely blurry photo was taken by a search and rescue worker from Virginia who wrote to the OpenStreetMap project to say, I wish you could see that my teammates' faces light up when they see that they can get such rich maps on their, GP, on their GPS devices. Um, the OpenStreetMap data found its way onto the iPhone, uh, where interestingly, uh, a lot of disaster relief workers are now using their smartphones as personal navigation devices, including uh, a chap from the European Commission humanitarian aid team who came into the uh, Ocha GIS tent while I was there and said, I need to send trucks to Petit Goav to, to deliver food, and uh, I want them to have OpenStreetMap. Well, they can have Google Maps, but really OpenStreetMap is what I want. And the OpenStreetMap was such a good source of data that this guy, this non-technical aid worker, knew to ask for it by name. And the consequence was that Map Action, which is a, an NGO that produces maps for disaster relief, wound up putting OpenStreetMap data into the hands of every single UN agency that was working to provide relief in Haiti after the earthquake. And a Map Action volunteer said to me personally, she said, without a doubt, OpenStreetMap has helped to save lives. Now this is incredible. I mean, this is, this is really incredible. Several hundred people from around the world, from the comfort of their own homes, were able to materially support the safety of individuals in crisis, using nothing more than uh, for coordination or leadership than a wiki page and an IRC channel. So, I mean, really, this has changed how disaster relief is going to be carried out in the future. So to try to consolidate this practice and make it sustainable, we formed a humanitarian open street map team. And there are members of HOT on the ground right now in Haiti trying to help build local capacity for developing maps of uh, Haiti uh, in the face of a, a really quite terrible um, epidemic. 
Uh, we've also uh, jump-started a project called Open Aerial Map, which seeks to be a repository of aerial and satellite imagery for the entire world, because we've seen how important having this imagery available is to crowdsourcing the process of supporting uh, disaster relief. Uh, so anyway, uh, we have a lot of work still to do, and I really hope uh, that you will come out and support us. And I want to thank you very much for your time and attention. Thank you very much. Thanks, awesome. Thank you very much.